открыть доклад и теперь переходим. Так, все видно? Так, и я уберу вот это. Окей. Я в первую очередь хотел поблагодарить, поблагодарить организаторов за такую возможность отдать дань памяти Сан Санычу, потому что все равно для нас, ну, я уже, я, если честно, с ним общалась совсем мало, у меня больше муж общался, но как молодому поколению это было очень важно видеть, что так активно что-то получается, работает, и что-то новое происходит в России, в МГУ, и это мотивировало на то, что <laughs> есть свет в конце тоннеля. Поэтому вот, мне кажется, знак вот этот вот мотылька, он очень правильный. Спасибо вам большое. Вот. Доклад я буду делать на английском, потому что в терминологии я запутаюсь. Я лучше <смех> буду на английском это говорить. Так что заранее прошу прощения. Uh, so I will talk about uh, ultrafast photochemistry. By ultrafast I mean 10-12 femtoseconds. Uh, so you, like, be the Heisenberg principle, one can say that uh, you have quite a um, wide band in energy and you can access several electronic states coherently within one uh, pulse excitation. And uh, therefore, it, uh, the question of non-adiabatic interaction between these electronic states um, arise uh, with the new features such as uh, dynamical isotope effect, which I will focus on. And uh, the cat is here because of the ghost of the Schrodinger cat, which is quantum in nature. And uh, I will show that this dynamical isotope effect is actually uh, quantum in origin. Everybody can hear me? Okay, so... I will not touch the cat, dead or alive. Let's keep it uh, uh, alive <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> But I will focus on the fact that we have non-stationary wave function and uh, more that it has this phase factor that is also time dependent and evolves in time. So what kind of features are hidden inside this phase and what can we do using this novel technique of ultrafast spectroscopy. So ultrafast photochemistry and ultrafast pulses were developed and pushed, really pushed by a group of people um, led, led by Richard Bernstein, who was really keen into the idea of chemical reaction dynamics and to understand what is really happening in the reaction, how these molecules Uh, interact with each other on a time domain and it was uh, honored by the Nobel Prize of Ahmed Zuen. So in short, the way how one can study the reaction dynamics using the ultra short pulse, ultra fast pulses is because when the pulse is short, if uh, when the pulse is acting very short amount in time, uh, the wave packet on in the excited state has no time to sample all the configurational space. So therefore, it creates the localized nuclear wave packet. And then it can move and sample the phase space in time. So we have this running man uh, going here and there and using pump probe technique, we can see how energetics or other properties of our excited state is changing. In contrast, when we excite with the long pulse, uh, we excite within specific energy, the eigenstate, and it is stationary, it is not moving. It is uh, quite different from this situation. So in uh, recent years, 
okay, let's put it here. In the recent years, the technique of this ultra-fast photochemistry went to the few femtosecond and already attosecond pulses. So what I will talk about is more like few femtoseconds, like 10 femtosecond pulses. And it provides the bandwidth of the pulse of about EV range. So it can access several electronic states. Here is this cage. Uh, I have, let's say, the atomic molecule with the dis internuclear distance here on the X and energy here. We have a ground state. We have Franconden region, and in the Franconden region, we have a coupling between the two excited states. We have in the diabetic picture two potentials that cross. And uh, but for those people who are far from this non adiabatic uh, field, uh, it means that basically in the wave, in the electronic wave function, we have, let's say, two determinants where here. The, the coefficients of these determinants are changing as a function of distance. So here it will be completely only one determinant, well, and this one will be the other one, and here it will be 50-50, and here it will be the other. So uh, we'll have, yeah, so, but in the diabetic picture, when we describe um, these uh, potentials, we insist on keeping the same nature of the excited state, so determinant along each curve is exactly the same or approximately the same. This depends on the diabetization scheme. And, and the off-diagonal terms uh, reflects these um, changes of the weights of each determinant. So what happens when we excite the ground state wave packet with a pulse? Yeah, it starts to move and starts to move coherently on two potentials. And of course, because the curvature can be quite different, they arrive to the coupling region in a different times. And they, I will show that they probe each other actually when they come to this coupling region. So what we, what we are focused on is this non-adiabatic dynamics between the vibronic coherent states. So what is vibronic coherent state is superposition, not only vibrational, but also maybe electronic. And when talking about non-adiabatic events, to simplify the picture, let's classify first. So what kind of non-adiabatic events we can have in this situation? So let's say we excite these two wave packets. Then we have the one wave packet that goes out to the uh, to its turning out to turning point, and the S2 wave packet comes to the coupling region. So it comes to the coupling region, the off diagonal terms in the Hamiltonian will uh, induce transfer of population from S2 to S1. That's in uh, photochemistry's uh, intersystem crossing. No, uh, non, no, non radiative crossing. Yeah. Uh, so we have one wave packet in the coupling region and basically the transfer depends only on the dynamical properties of this wave packet only. This is what I will call later unistate wave packet because it's only one state that is uh, important. Somehow. Uh, now the second type of event can be when this S1 wave packet comes back to the coupling region and overlap effectively with the S2 wave packet. And therefore, now the coupling integral will be dependent on the overlap of these two wave packets. And uh, because this overlap is a complex creature, I mean, it's a complex number, uh, it depends on the phase matching between these two wave packets. And these phases are time dependent, so we can probe the history of this wave packet, like how it went to the outer turning point and how the phase was propagated up to the event of recurrence. This uh, effect, uh, let's say, was already mentioned 
uh, in the paper of Mukamel and the group, uh, here is Bennett, the, the first co-author in GCTC, uh, the fact that non-adiabatic transfer depends on the overlap. But they didn't study the isotope effect. We will show that the effect of mass can really probe this effect very easily. And Fernando Martin also showed that isotope effect in the autoimmunization profiles quite similar in nature appears also there. So this seems to be uh, uh, happening not only in non adiabatic dynamics. So what we will do is we compare the unistate versus bi-state coupling, and we will probe it using the isotope effect. So why the, I, the effect of mass is a good probe? Because it really, it does not change potential. We have the same potential. We have in the diabetic picture, the same couplings, but we will only change the kinetic energy terms. So we launch dynamics, we don't need to, re to recompute the quantum chemistry, and, uh, which is really the heaviest part for the, the atomics. And uh, then we compare the exchange of the population between these uh, two electronic states. So I will start from the example of the bound states of V2. Uh, it is in the diabetic representation. So it is a very well studied molecule, spectroscopically, spectroscopically quantum, from quantum chemistry point of view. There is very nice paper of Spersberg and Mayer <clears throat> with diabetic potentials and couplings, which reproduced nicely the absorption spectra. And why it is so important to reproduce, because in the absorption, uh, one can see the perturbation of lines due to non-adiabatic interaction between the states. So if we now look on the potentials, so here are the potentials of interest. Uh, the two Rydberg states, C and O, are quite harmonic in this energy range. And then we have shallow potential of valence state. So the front condon region is over here, and here is the coupling. It is quite strong coupling. It's about uh, 0.1 EV at most. And uh, one can see that the coupling is in the Franconden region. So indeed in the normal absorption spectrum, one can see the perturbation of specific levels. And uh, therefore one can fit, and actually it's quite hard <laughs> to do it uh, from quantum chemistry uh, to reproduce all the experimental energy levels correctly. But what is important in view of our work is the fact that the coupling is localized. It is localized at short distances, basically in the front condon, and the potential, the shape of the potentials of the Rydbergs is quite different from the balance. So as about machinery, we use quantum dynamics on the grid. So for each internuclear distance, R, in atomic units, we assign a coefficient for each electronic state. So K is the index of electronic state. G is the uh, index of grid. Uh, so we re represent our time-dependent wave function like this, and we put it in the time-dependent Schrodinger equation and solve it using wunge kutta propagation in time. So the field is taken explicitly by the time profile with the Gaussian envelope and the optical carrier. In this case, it was 12 femtosecond pulse, which has uh, almost EV in bandwidth. And it is centered so that all three states can be accessed. Okay, so now let's see the results. So here are the results for the population dynamics. It means that we excite from the ground state and how many is in each electronic state at a specific time. And uh, so this is the time, this is population and uh, different Rydberg states are up there and valence state is here. So the two isotopes, the and 14 is solid line and 15 is dashed. 
one can see that after the field is over, it's about here, it's about 20, 20 seconds, we still have quite intense population dynamics due to non adiabatic coupling, due to this, okay, in this case, it's diabatic coupling. Uh, but what is quite interesting is that for two isotopes in the beginning, the, this dynamics seems to be quite the same. So this exchange of the population is not affected by the mass. While after some time, like around 60 femtoseconds, there is something happening. So the dynamics becomes quite different. We have depletion of the valence state in N15 and acquire of the population in N14. So we have opposite rate of transfer uh, for different isotopes. So how this electron, electronic transfer basically, right? Non-adiabatic interaction uh, feels the, the, the mass of the atoms. That's what I will talk about. Yeah, so let's first focus on uh, the easy part, the early time dynamics where there is no isotope effect. So here is only valence state population. We see that the two curves for the two isotopes are pretty much the same. And uh, what I plot here is first, this is the plot of the potentials and just to, for the illustration, I put the mean values of on each electronic state as a function of time, 4 and 14. Now, uh, this plot will be the population as a function of distance at different times. So actually the wave packets, as they are created during the field, yes, so this is how we pump the wave packets the color code is the same. So we have all three wave packets populated, all three states populated. Now the valence states start to go out. Yeah, it goes pretty much further away. Now the, the green, the Rydberg state is coming back to the coupling. Like one can judge where the coupling is due to the crossing, right? Where the diabetic uh, curves cross, uh, there is strong coupling. Yeah, and what is important, we see here the newborn valence state population. So the Rydberg state transfer population from, uh, to, to the valence state. And this is exactly this peaks here. And uh, this is what we called before the unistate, the unistate transfer. So where the transfer is happening only because we have one wave packet in the coupling region. Okay. Now let's go to the longer time dynamics where we actually have this strong isotope effect. We can see that for this valence state, it actually is really quite strong compared to the normal kinetic isotope effect that we usually talk about. And here I plot the full story. So we have a map of the population in the valence states as a function of distance and time. So we create the population in the franc condon region at about two atomic units. Then it goes to the outer turning point at about 3.5. Meanwhile, we have these newborn wave packets that we just talked about, right, at, at this coupling region that is close to Frank Condon. But then around 60, what, it hap what happens is that the wave packet that was initially pumped by the pulse comes back to the coupling region. So it overlaps with the Rydberg state wave packet. And actually, it is this B state transfer that uh, we talked about where the transfer depends on the overlap of the two wave packets. To be able to describe such a transfer, we actually, it's, it's good to have this exact quantum dynamics to run calculation and to be sure that the results are correct and all is taken into account. But to analyze qualitatively, it's really very hard because for each grid point, you have its own phase 
and how they superpose, nobody knows. Now, to, to do that, we make several approximation. So we use the Gaussian function uh, for the nuclear wave packet. Uh, and the time dependence of this uh, Gaussian function is actually uh, implicit. So the, it depends on the parameters of this uh, nuclear wave function depend on time. So I have four parameters for each electronic state K. I have width, alpha, gamma is the phase. So it's a free term that has no R dependence. Then I have mean value of R of the coordinate and mean value of the momentum. And basically if one can look on this form, it is a tail of series in terms of R minus mean R. So around the mean position, we do a Taylor series uh, for, let's say, long chi. Uh, this type of the wave function was uh, described by Heller quite uh, far <laughs> from now. Uh, and it was shown that it is exact for one electronic state for quadratic potential exactly because uh, it's enough to have this uh, up to second order terms in the Taylor series. And what is most crucial for us is that we have actual form of these time dependent parameters, how they depend on time analytically. So we have mass both in the width, for example, and in the phases. Uh, so, and we can trace now how uh, it affects our non-adiabatic transfer. So let's first write the actual expression for the rate of the population transfer. It is this coupling integral between the wave packet. So chi b is Gaussian on the valence electronic state, chi c is uh, wave packet on the Rydberg electronic state, vbc is diabatic coupling. It depends on the distance in, in principle, so it is inside the integral. And these are two coefficients assigned to each electronic state. This is already model version because initially you cannot separate this coefficient C and chi quite easily, but this is less important here. So in N2 we show that actually the Condon approximation is good so we can put this R dependent coupling outside the coupling integral with values mean between the two wave packets uh, and uh, have only the overlap integral in it. So the rate of population transfer is actually dependent on the overlap integral where this phase matching is uh, affecting the sign. One can see here that there is not only this nuclear phase but also the electronic phase uh, matching. So this I will talk about later. But before going to the details of this parameter time dependence, uh, uh, let's build a toy model where this Gaussian approximation will be actually not uh, approximately good, but good. So we build a toy model where we replace the unharmonic potential of the a valence state to, by the shifted potential but harmonic. So we shift it to almost the same minimum as the shallow valence potential. The coupling is pretty much, okay, it's close. Uh, the Rydberg state potential is the same. And uh, another step is that we don't want to study this almost trivial unistate transfer where there is no effect of mass. We want to study effect of mass and the B-state transfer. So we turn on the diabatic coupling only when this first recurrence is happening. So when the wave packet on this one uh, goes first to the outer turning point and then comes back and here we turn on the diabatic coupling. Okay, so here is very busy plot, I will try to, to go slowly. So first trick here is 
the fact that we have mass of the nuclei on this x-axis. So instead of taking only realistic uh, isotopomers, we, we, we thought we need to exercise more and uh, went to in silico propagation for the mass from 10 to 20. So here results for all this set of masses. And uh, what is plotted is the rate of transfer. So the negative values are for the depletion of the population in the valence state and the positive values are for the acquiring of the population. And time is the time of when the coupling is happening. So when the coupling is uh, on. So the first figure is for the potentials of N2. So where we have this unharmonic potential, we have this valleys for different masses. So we see that, for example, for mass 10, we deplete, while for mass 13, we first acquire. So indeed, we have this inversion. And the toy model is perfectly reproducing this feature. So for some masses, we have first positive rates, then negative. For some, we have negative, then positive. So with this toy model, we can at least try to understand what actually, uh, where the mass and enters, where mass affects uh, the rate of transfer. Okay, and now, here. So here's the plot for the rate of transfer for the toy model for different masses, 10, 12, 14, at the time of the coupling. So we have no transfer, then we have positive acquiring population negative for mass 10. Then for 14, it actually happens later, of course, because heavier masses move uh, slower. Uh, and, uh, but not also, it has actually opposite uh, rate of transfer. It first depletes and then acquire. And then some of them have completely different uh, shape of the rate of transfer and at, only at mass 20 we were able to recover the same pattern for the rate of transfer. So that this uh, makes us think to think that it is related to the phases and to the basically trigonometric circle. Okay, so here we go to this phase more closely First, let's compare uh, the wave packet, actually the, how the wave packet looks like uh, at these different points. So for mass 14, for example, for this black curve, I put C and D points, and this panel C and D represent the wave packets on the valence and the Rydberg state uh, for, for this C and D points, actually. Uh, the solid lines one can see here is the grid propagation. So it's exact results for the toy model and the dashed lines are actually Gaussian. So one can see that our Gaussians indeed are very good approximation for this specifically designed toy model. Okay. But more than that, one can see that when we have C where we have no transfer at all, and D, where we have almost maximal transfer, the actual position of the two wave packets is not quite different. They are both in the coupling region. The shape is not, you know, pretty much different. I would not say that one can guess that the mean values are different. So, and indeed, when we checked the velocities, the mean values, uh, the width, they were not affecting a lot. The most significant factor was indeed this gamma phase because in the derivative of the gamma the mass was acting each time of the dynamics. And here is the plot for this phase matching. So the gamma of the valence state minus the gamma of the Rydberg state B minus C uh, as a function of time and for different masses. So first feature here is the fact that this active transfer happens 
when the, this phase difference is stationary. This is very interesting because, I mean, this is hard to understand how they can control each other in such a way that this gamma becomes stationary and then the, the rate transfer start to be significant, but maybe it will be, uh, I mean, it is understood from simple RPA theory, right? When it oscillates fast, the transfer, the transfer will be small, but still this was a surprise. The second one, uh, one was also very nice. The fact that with mass, it jumps on a, some specific value, but not, not some two pi or pi, or some value, which depends on the history of dynamics, basically. So how it propagates in time and what is the shape of the potential and what is the duration of the pulse. So on, on all this prehistory, so for mass 10, it stays around eight pi or eight over two pi. And for mass 14, it goes to other values. And when we look closer to the decomposition of these phases for the electronic and nuclei, it becomes clear that indeed this gamma factor affects in a much more important way. So we write our coefficient here as in earlier form. So now we have this theta that is responsible for electronic and gamma for the nuclei. And here is the plot for the theta for two masses. The solid line is for the sine and cosine for mass 12 and dashed line for mass 10. Uh, and one can see that they are not quite different. They are pretty much the same. So this phases are not affected by mass significantly. While if we compare this delta gamma, the cosine and sine coming from the nuclear phase for these two masses, we can see that the sine, for example, was one, now it is zero. The cosine, okay, was minus one over two, now it is one. So this jump that was here is really responsible for this inversion or for the change in the pattern of the transfer. And uh, recently we discussed also the same uh, features in the ultrafast field induced dynamics on dissociative potentials. So we used LAH, we excite from the ground state and then follow the dynamics on these three. So we, we selected those that are strongly coupled. Basically they are dissociative and that's a quite different situation because there is only one, uh, one chance for the wave packets to interact. So they pass and that's it, they never come, come back. So that's why it is a little bit different. But nevertheless, we, uh, we were able to show that it depends on the relative motion on the coupled electronic states, and not only on the mean coordinate, but also on the velocities and uh, on the coherences. So how the field interacts with the uh, electronic states also matters. So in short, we also published these results, so one can see the details about it in the paper. But basically, so the field creates the wave packet here, and it, it takes time to come to this interaction part. So there is still time to, accu to accumulate the differences between the two isotopes, because mass, uh, it, it should take some time for the mass to uh, make this effect. And we can see that, so here is the population versus time for the two electronic states for the sigma four and sigma three. Yeah, actually there was also for sigma two, but it's not shown here, Never mind. 
So we have in the beginning and during the field, it's actually quite similar for all three isotopes, LAH, LAD, LAT. But when they come to the coupling region, because of several factors, here it is really uh, one thing is velocities, because now it is non adiabatic transfer because potentials are adiabatic. And therefore, the coupling is uh, multiplied by the momentum. Then mass enters in the coupling. Then also you have the effect of the overlap. And um, there, are, there, there is also the fact how long the wave packet stays in the coupling region, actually. Because for these uh, heavier masses, uh, they stay in the coupling region longer and therefore they transfer much more. This was, I think, the most important part here. Uh, yeah, so we just started this part. It is not yet probed <laughs> from any experiment. We try to understand if there will be any effect of this nuclear motion on the electron dynamics uh, in uh, many degrees of freedom. But basically the take home message is that when we have such a complicated dynamics where we populate several electronic states and we know already that for the high energy regions, there is a forest of electronic states and they are often coupled. Uh, so there might be effects of the phases and the quantum nature of the nuclei can appear. And the easy way to probe it is using the isotope substitution. So basically, <laughs> yeah, I put it here as an analogy to two slit experiment. When we excite to the Frank Condon region, we create the wave packets pretty much in the same state. But then they start to wait, they start to follow their own potentials. So they have their own paths. And then they arrive to the coupling region, so they overlap. And we see the interference partners in the overlap and in the transfer. With that, I want to finish. I want to thank my supervisors, Rafi Levine and Francois Rimakel, our student Stefan from Yes and uh, folks from Fritz Harbor Center. It's really very nice to work here. And I like Israel very much. <laughs> and thanks, uh, you, thank you for your attention. Большое спасибо, Ксения, за интересный доклад. Есть ли вопросы? Um, можно вопрос? Да, конечно. Um... Конечно, я понимаю, вот вы рассказывали про квантовую динамику на вот этих двух э, состояниях, э, и что это эффект, э, связанный с фазой э, ядерных э, волновых пакетов, но пробовали ли вы э, воспроизвести его э, просто в surface hopping э, динамике, э, посмотреть, будет ли там просто, если там все равно сохраняется э, фаза электронно-волновой функции, и будет ли там э, аналогичная ситуация? Это не работает, это нет, суферхоппинг не может такие ситуации воспроизвести пока в настоящей форме. И здесь а, да. в том, что ну, существенно э, сильное возмущение и surface hopping, конечно, не передаст вот эту интерференцию в волновых пакетах друг с другом корректно. А там, если попытаться ввести вот фазу... Вот... Простите, oh. вот этот вот uh, первый вариант. Uh -huh. Вот. Unistate, скорее всего, будет хорошо. Но uh -huh. все равно нужно будет... Я пробовала с азотом, очень долго мучилась. Но из-за того, что каплинг очень сильный, это практически нереально. Вот. Но вот такие вещи, по, по крайней мере, насколько я знаю, пока еще ничего не изобретено. А, а если попытаться вот сделать что-то для того, типа, как делают квазиклассическую динамику для электронов, там, скажем, если считать сечение в 
фото, да, не в течение угловые картины фотоионизации VMI, нельзя ли вот такую же, такого же типа классическую динамику, то есть не используя полного пакета, а дешевую как бы, модификацию классической динамики, просто добавив туда фазу, ну, по сути, как в ВКБ, ВКБ при движении, добавив фазу движения тетера. И там таким образом ее аккумулировать просто при движении вдоль поверхности. Я не знаю, про какой метод вы говорите, но вам нужно эту фазу правильно учесть. В этом как бы основное. То есть, по крайней мере, здесь как бы надежда в том, что она довольно просто описывается, да, вот эта дельта-гамма, угу. она, в принципе, довольно простая. И в том же Эймс, метод, который точный, да, в принципе, который разрабатывается в группе Мартинеса, тут Мартинес. Это который мультиспаунинг? Да, да, да. Вот. Mm -hmm. Там как раз вот такая форма у этих гаусян, но mm -hmm. их там много. Вот. Ну и эти параметры, они, в принципе, как базисы работают, то есть они там все это подгоняются. Но даже в этом случае очень тяжело работает этот метод. Ну вот я к тому, что вот вы делаете динамику на гридах, и, соответственно, то есть в одномере, там, понятно, это нормально еще двухмерная задача на сетку уже построить, тем более полноценную квантовую динамику на сетку потянуть, это уже существенно больше затраты. А, что уж говорить там, про многотонные молекулы, то есть там опять можно использовать MT, MCTD, Multi-configuration там Dependent Heart Да, но... вот, вот эти методы наиболее такие. Но опять же, там на предел восьми степеней свободы с аналитическим потенциалом там не выйти. Ну, поймите, лучше сделать что-то надежное, чем сделать что-то совсем ненадежное и непонятно зачем. Ну, да, действительно. А вопрос в том, как, в каком направлении двигаться, и народ работает, и мы в том числе работаем э, как правильно сократить да, размерность задачи. Вот. Ну, это проблема. Это... Ну, то есть пока что им работа идет да. в этом да, плане. Это для будущего. Ясно. <смех> Ясно. Спасибо большое. По крайней мере, нам вот, ну, мне, по крайней мере, в чем, что в этой работе нравится, то, что позволяет, вот, ты изменяешь массу, и ты видишь эффект. То есть ты можешь уже бенчмарк какой-то сделать. В суферскопинг там можно же ведь все, что угодно получить. Ну, так надо, надо поэтому много серфинг-хоппингов делать, набирать нормальную статистику. Не, 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 там не только в статистике дело. Там не только в статистике дело. Там, например, со скоростями. То есть, как, например, вот здесь вот, если в этом приближении, да, в принципе, вот этот интеграл каплинга зависит от скоростей на двух... Ну, то есть, о, господи, средняя э, скорость, средний момент э, двух состояний. Да. То, как они различаются. Я не знаю, как там это учитывается, как в разных траекториях средний момент будет э, как-то очень... Нет, ну, в смысле, там же, там же просто в формуле там стоит э, э, скорость на одной поверхности, и там, соответственно, на производство вот этого каплинга по координате, ну, градиент, то есть этого каплинга по координате на скорость. То есть там вот этот вектор стоит для одной траектории, там это, в принципе, точное выражение, ну, или оно есть? Не, оно есть, но оно не, то, не, не дает точный результат, не, оно не, не работает в таких ситуациях. А, ну, ладно, может быть. Ясно, спасибо большое. Есть еще вопросы?